Hey YouTube, this is Stream Crush. I'm just talking here about uh, the new art update for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Uh, it's a short video, but I wanted to kind of get my thoughts on it. Uh, Pantheon is an MMO that has been in development for, oh wow, almost a decade at this point. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really taken too long, to be honest. It, they keep promising alphas. Uh, they keep saying, you know, this is going to be the year. And they have made some significant progress, but I do think that they definitely need to start showing more. Um, so hopefully this art update is going to be something that is a, a big improvement uh, towards the progress of the game. So we're going to take a quick look at it and then we're going to uh, make some comments. You know what? I'm going to move my model just a little bit. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I think we're good. I think we're good. Those of you who've been around for a long time, you know that when Pantheon first began and was first starting to be shown, it leveraged Unity assets almost completely. And as the amount of those grew and grew, the game started to take on a look super early on that was defined by that. And there was never really an opportunity where there was a, a place of stepping back and saying like, what do we want Pantheon to look like? I mean, even on the level of like the, the art style in and of itself, not even looking at some of the, the particular aspects of this or that thing, but more when we look at the overall art style for Pantheon, is this, is this what we want? And so not being able to really ask or consider that question and kind of being already on a path of, you know, a, a very highly, highly you know, asset store driven aesthetic, we have gotten to the point where we felt strongly that for, for two things, that we wanted to take the opportunity and give ourselves the chance to look at what Pantheon's art style was and ask those questions. What do we want this game to really be? What do we want it to really look like if we could lift, you know, the, the legacy asset store chains, if you will, and really revisit that. But the other thing that has compelled us, what we have kind of come to terms with over the last couple of years is because we've been on a very realistic track, we have always been trying to push to make realistic things look good, that we could continue with this very realistic you know, look and approach to the game. We're now competing with examples out there of realism done in a very effective way. But what's more important than that um, the most important thing about Pantheon is that it runs well play, and plays smoothly and performantly that we've been able to achieve that. So with those two things in mind, we set out to find our, our look. And I just want to pause real quick here. I wonder how long this has been under development. If I remember correctly, it was last mm, November, I think, when they had discussed having... Uh, models. They they had showed some models for like the, the the humans, and they said that the dark mirror were pretty close to completion, and that they were going to be showing them off soon. And then they never did. And since then, they've done some teasers, but it's been a pretty quiet year. So they must have basically made this decision probably shortly after that. Hmm, that's fascinating. Because they had said that they had brought in a couple of new artists and that was going to help the art pipeline and all that kind of stuff. And they were showing off some of the models and, and other uh, things that, that were in the game that they were showing off, you know, new buildings and, and stuff. And it looked like they were making good progress. So to scrap all of that and completely redo it is a big undertaking. I don't know if that's madness or if I should give props. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I would definitely be curious to know when they made that choice. Establish the conventions of it, communicate. And and I will say, yeah, the, the Unity Store thing, uh, a lot of people will complain about uh, Pantheon having this, uh, you know, nine years of development, 10 years of development, whatever. Kind of it did, but it didn't. I mean, there's never really been much of a budget for this game. And, you know, the crowdfunding, they, they originally, it was a Kickstarter and the Kickstarter failed. And then they tried crowdfunding and that didn't work out too well. 
Um, you know, I know there's people that have made some very expensive pledges and stuff, but the pledge system as a whole hasn't really brought in a lot of revenue for them. Not like it has for Ashes of Creation. And the private investor money hasn't really flowed in until recently. And even then, it's only been a few million dollars, which sounds like a lot, but in game development terms, that's really not much. Uh, so Visionary Realms has always been a very small team, just barely keeping the game going with uh, updates here and there, and uh, using a lot of Unity assets. And by Unity assets, I think people don't understand, these are the stock things that you can get for a game engine, just to get you going. They're placeholders. They're not meant really to be more than that. Think of like a Steam game that, you know, some somebody makes. It's like an indie horror game or whatever, right? And it uses, or like an Itch.io game, you know, it uses a lot of very generic looking models and assets just to game, get the game going, right? That's kind of like what was happening here. And it just happened to kind of work with what they were doing. And they did spend a lot of time trying to make it work. But there's been evolutions even of that. Uh, you know, the original uh, demos of, of Pantheon with Co-Carnage and stuff years ago when they were doing dungeon runs with Brad McQuaid, all the way up to, you know, the Fairthale, uh, you know, re redo or whatever it was going to be for them, the big demo, uh, up until recently where they were starting to, you know, like put textures on all the gray boxing. So yeah, they've, they've jumped around a lot, but the game hasn't been in full development. Uh, I don't think until recently, to be honest, there's always been just a little bit tinkering here and there. Uh, and just enough to kind of get a bare bones uh, of a game up and up off the ground. Uh, to this day, I still wonder if Unity was a mistake for them. But as an indie development team, I'm not sure that jumping over to like Unreal or anything would have been any better. So it's 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 messy, especially with the light of all the news that's been happening with Unity recently. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely been tough for them. And I and I know that's not going to make some people who weren't already, you know, like if you're, if you're already down in this game, that's probably not going to be enough to assure you or, or convince you to change your mind. But there's been a lot of difficulties with developing this game. So it, when you see positive updates from them, I, I like to be optimistic and feel like they're finding their footing, especially lately. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been rough. Um, but I think at least for, developing the world and getting it off the ground, I think this is a huge step. I really do. Hate it, how, how it needs to be to, to our artists to make sure they understand it. But we have made some pretty... I will say that these T-poses do not do the models any favors. Significant changes to our art style. And the best way that I can describe it and the way that we... Those animations look good, though. ...is a, um, a hand-painted style. A hand-painted style to, to the game, to the world, to the characters. Hmm. It's amazing what the difference of just changing the colors of a texture do, huh? I want this art book. <laughs> There's definitely a consistent visual style happening. That's a good thing. We are thrilled to share our new art with our community. Not only does the painted style give Pantheon its own recognizable identity, but it is an identity that can withstand the test of time. And this is important. Mm -hmm. We are creating a world that we want to enjoy for years to come. And having a supporting style that can hold up through those years will keep the world familiar, but still engaging, enthralling, and exciting. A painted style is a simplified approach that is sustainable for our independent-sized team. In fact, just in the first couple of months with the painted style... Could they have not picked better faces for these models? The male and female models just both look really bad in the face. The rest of the model looks pretty good. Although I think the uh, underwear textures could be a little better. But I think overall they look really good. The proportions aren't bad at all. We have been able to get more art into Pantheon than ever before in the same time frame. From design all the way through to implementation, it is all faster, cleaner, 
and more efficient. This is a big deal for a small team taking on the building of an entire world. Pantheon is a community-centric game, and even here the new style can help. We expect Pantheon to reach more audiences. We believe the style resonates with more gamers across more demographics, bringing more people together into this growing community. Sweet we are very much set. looking forward to this new stage in Pantheon's development and are eager to share more of our painted style as we continue to bring it into the game. I will say this, Pantheon devs, if you're watching this video, please, please, for the love of God, design your armor as much as you possibly can to avoid clipping. This this guy right here running, and you can see his t tabard, or or whatever that is, clipping through his his legs, that looks terrible. World of Warcraft has some of the worst clipping because of stuff like this. Please, please, before it ever gets too far, please design your anything anything that can overhang on the player model. I know sometimes there's limits, and some things will have to clip, <laughs> but. It's very distracting when basic stuff like tabards or cloaks or shoulder plates, uh, shields, those types of things, you know, when they clip and they and they they look like you're chopping your model in half or something. It just it's it's terrible. Please, please don't fall into this trap. I beg you. It's a new stage in Pantheon's development and are eager to share more of our painted style as we continue to bring it into the game. That looks pretty good. I, I will say that I wish the textures had more, uh, like this is a metal, this is plate, right? This is metal. Uh, I think that it should have a more metallic sheen or look to it, even if it's a dull look. Um, so I think there's still some ways to go. Um, also, if you look at like the hair here, it almost looks a bit too, uh, I'm not sure the word for it, clay, Play-Doh, shiny. Um, you know, like so. So I think that there's some some work that still needs to be done. But the overall results here, this is a good looking set of armor. I really do like this armor. Very, very iconic looking armor design. Um, and it fits his proportions really well. I mean, you could make the argument that maybe he doesn't look as bulky because he's wearing plate armor and stuff. He should look like a big muscular dude. But uh, I mean, compared to like World of Warcraft's humans, I think that this will be a more popular uh, model design. Um, you know, it matches the idea of what a human could be. If anything, maybe have a slightly bulkier option on the player select screen. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe something that's a little bit more uh, like swole. <laughs> Doesn't have to be too crazy, but just like a slight body one, body two type of thing um, might be might be the way to go. But if you're not going to do that, this is fine. There's really nothing you need to mess with except for this. These these things, the clipping is just. You, you gotta do something about that. Like, just anything, please. Because <laughs> it looks so cool. But when you see it clipping into the leg like this, it just, it really ruins it. It really does. It makes me never want to use this piece of armor because I know that it's going to chop through his legs. And that's that's not cool, you know? So, but but I do like it. And this face here looks a little better with, you know, better lighting and everything. And that's the other thing I'm noticing too, is while I do see some shadows and everything, it looks like there's a lighting or pass or two that isn't here. Um, like it's obviously daylight, but I don't feel like it's daylight. The sun shining, the God rays, um, that, that feeling of like the warmth from the sun is not here. The colors overall like this I, I don't know if it's just youtube compression doing this um but there's almost like a washed out look a slightly faded look to everything um which really i mean it, it is selling the the uh, painted look they're going for but it feels like maybe there isn't enough pop in in the look uh, i'm not sure how to phrase it but like it doesn't seem as vibrant as it could be uh, and I'm, like i said i don't know if that's just youtube compression or not uh, but I, but I really do like this. I really do. So far, everything I've seen has been really good in motion. Pictures are not selling the style as well, particularly with the T pose stuff. Um, but when you see this in motion, people were comparing it to World of Warcraft. I I think this is very much distinct enough to set, stand on its own. I don't think you could look at this and be like, unless you were just a very mindless idiot. I think if you were to put these two together and be like, you know, which one's which? World of Warcraft would stand out 
compared to this and vice versa. These are very distinct uh, styles. So I like that it's it's doing this. this is, and, and overall, I mean, even if you compare it to previous uh, like Pantheon demos of the world and stuff that, you know, where they're showing off all the new assets and whatever they've put in, the alphas, uh, this has a very cohesive look. All of the trees and everything, they look, they feel better in the environment. Uh, everything just feels better. Um, I really do like it. Maybe a bit more diversity with some of the grass stuff. Um, you know, cause this, I mean, I know it's the green textures designed to kind of make you think grass, but, uh, I mean, truly that's, that's about it. Uh, so maybe, maybe there's a bit, not enough grass. Maybe you could put like have a setting where people can crank it up if they wanted to or something like that. Cause I would love to have like fields of grass, not just grass spots here and there. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of that kind of stuff can, oh, I guess that was it. All of that stuff can kind of come, you know, all that stuff, can, all this stuff can kind of come at the end, you know, all the little immersion things, you know, little bees around the flowers or, you know, little gusts of wind drifting along the ground, um, you know, that kind of feeling to kind of sell the climate, uh, sell the, you know, cause I would love to see a rainstorm. Like they, they did a a video a few months back or last year, I think it was of the weather. Oh my gosh. Like I want that, that beautiful thunder, the crack of thunder with the rain coming down. So, so atmospheric, you know, uh, like the, the, I want to see what this looks like at night. Cause you know, nights are supposed to be very dark in Pantheon unless you have uh, the ability to light it up with spells and special equipment and stuff. It's going to be very dark. So, you know, seeing that style of night would be really cool. Uh, spell effects, you know, I'm really curious to see how spell effects are going to work with this design. Obviously you can't just use generic unity particles, you know, but, uh, uh you know, creating unique, uh, looking spell effects for this would be very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I genuinely think this is a very good foundation. Um, I think my biggest issue other than just some of the nip, I mean, is, is most of it is nitpickish, like, like these phases. I mean, I, I know these are going to be animated better. Um, it's obvious that they're going for some variety of, of, uh, hairstyles and stuff here, but I would like to see some face styles too. Um, you know, because, uh, that looks good. That does not look good. Those faces are terrible, but the body, like you can see the textures and everything are good, but the posing, see that, that pose, that standing pose sells it, right? Um, yeah, but that, that does not sell the models. <laughs> they, they at least needed to have the, the pose and. And that's the thing is like you showed off the male running around, show off the female, show off the female. I think, I think right now you're, you're doing all of this stuff. Get the player races in. You can touch them up later. You know, you guys are designing all these monsters and everything. Get the player races in, get them done. You don't have to have them perfect. Uh, they don't have to have every mo armor made for them right off the bat, but get them in the game so that people can actually start seeing more than just this dude in every video. You know, I think that uh, they had a dwarf model and maybe that was about it. I can't remember if they had anything else. Um, you know, I have to go back and look. It's been a while since I watched some of the Pantheon videos. They haven't really done many updates this year, so I've kind of forgotten. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like there really needs to be more variety. Um, these, mo these models, look, you know, these monsters, if they can capture this, I mean, awesome. Right. I mean, that's pretty cool looking too. Which, which one was that supposed to be? Cadet plate armor. All right. I'm sold. That's cool looking plate armor. And, and I do like that. They're showing off these armors on this male here. And these are great. These fit the idea of Pantheon very well. They're fantasy armors, but they're not, um, you know, absolutely insane, crazy, you know, looking armors. These look pretty plausible. I'd imagine fancy, this is probably like a standard set. I imagine fancy ones might have some special effects and stuff like that, but uh, sticking with like the more realistic art designs, at least at first is a, is a good thing for a game like this um, for what they're trying to sell. Um, Got to have rats in all these games, rats and bats, rats and bats and rats and bats. Um, yeah. And, and overall you can just, you can really see the design. This needs anti-aliasing stat, but, and this is the real danger with this design is that, uh, the texture detail is painted, sure, but you risk the blobbiness um, of, of not having refined shapes. 
like looking at this picture if you remove the spider you know this this foliage in the front here but just looking at all this in the back this is just a bunch of jagged looking mushy colors um, and that's a problem right uh, you know I mean I understand work in progress it's an alpha um, you know but yeah even close up with this tree um, this sparkle effect probably looks pretty amazing in motion if that's an actual sparkle effect and not just a painting part of the texture um, but yeah the the light and shadowing effect on these really needs to be better I think to help sell it this just looks like a flat gray thing it doesn't look like a piece of stone to me um, but yeah uh, again everything seems to look way better in motion um, and also you know again I have to point it out while there is grass and stuff sticking up, this ground just looks so flat and empty. Um, it just, I don't know. It just, something about it bothers me. You know, seeing a bunch of what's supposed to be green grass and then just a few blades sticking up is just the weirdest thing ever. Hmm, cool spiders. This is a really good, I like this. I like this one right here. This to me feels better. Uh, I don't know if it's just the angle of everything, but you see there's a huge amount of grass up in front here. Um, this wolf just, he just fits so much better. The lighting, you can see like it, it's, there's, there's not much haze in this video, right? Or in this, in this, pit, uh, wow, I can't pick my words. There's not as much haze in this spot, right? So this all comes across way better. The lights coming down. It looks good. This is, this is what I kind of was expecting. Um, this bit here with the animations, oh, go back a little bit. These animations look way, way better. Um, and obviously, I'd rather they focus uh, just on the basic animations. Uh, just get get all the models in the game. You know, get them, get as much as you can done, and then do your passes. Um, but again, I don't know how game development works, so <laughs> maybe maybe I'm wrong. And yeah, I, I'm probably wrong. But this Griffin looks good. Um, I'm maybe a little bit too happy, you know. But maybe that's intentional. Maybe there's angrier looking Griffins later on. Uh, but I like the design. It's just a good, solid Griffin design. The animations, speaking of, for this one are a little weird. With those two things in mind, because you have we set out to that right there, that weird flappiness to it. Establish the conventions of it. But you know, again, that can be refined a little bit. But it looks good. It fits in. The snakes, of course, you have to have snakes in every game. So vestigial wings. I like this. I like these little details here. I'd love to see some kind of like a like art book or or. You know, maybe have a thing with Pantheon devs where you can just talk about these. That'd be fun. Um, beetles. Oh my gosh, fire beetles in EverQuest. That's what this totally what this reminds me of. <laughs> Man, these things are the bane of your existence if you live in Freeport or Kinos. Um, the bear thing. Yeah. I I like what they're going for with this guy, but he does look a little derby. I won't lie, but the animations and stuff are cool. I like this concept though, of having them be like acclimated to different environments. Um, you know, pretty, pretty cool little concept there. So they're, you know, you got the ice guys and so on and so forth. I like that. That's cool. And then you got your standard, standard dude here. Um, I do wish that, you know, like he looks a little rattier in some cases, like the hobo version of some of this armor or the, some of these designs, but it's not really that far off. So, you know, maybe, maybe you could take some of the texture ideas from the pictures here to kind of texture some of the, the bone areas a little better. Um, it just feels like maybe some of the more shaded parts need to have like a deeper contrast to the unshaded parts, but that's just me. That just feels weird. Especially when you see him in game. Uh, I did notice this little cool little camp area thing they have here. This is new to me. I've never seen an area in Pantheon have this kind of like creepy looking pillars, ancient ruin type area. Not sure where this is exactly, but uh, I've never seen this. Particularly with this like glowing statue guy thing here. That's definitely a new asset. I'm also noticing when I'm looking at the cliffs and everything all the rocky areas. Um, I know they're a retexture gray box, but you can tell that they have uh, definitely done some interesting things with them. And there's more blending of everything. All, everything looks like it's part of one thing instead of just assets placed on top of each other. That said, I do think that with these trees, 
these trees sometimes look like they have just been placed. This picture in particular illustrates that. They just look like, you know, like you can see like a very clear line between the tree and the ground. Um, I don't know how that would be fixed. Maybe have the trees flare out a little bit in the roots or something. But um, this, this feels a little weird here. Uh, just to have it like just a sharp cut off between the tree and the ground. Um, that would be something that maybe could be looked at. Um, this is a wonderful shot. I love this. You know, again, grass everywhere looks good. Um, that nice light coming in, you know, show, you know, highlighting the land. It's like everything the light touches is yours, Simba. You know, that type of thing. Uh, this looks really good. This right here, I think, is a good shot that highlights the changes in the engine really well. As well as this shot. This shot's really good because I think this is the first time I've looked at Pantheon and went, okay, that looks cohesive. <laughs> this does not look like a bunch of assets just placed. Um, you know, and, and it's not like those assets look terrible. It's just that this is the first time I've looked at it and went like, oh yeah, yeah, this is Pantheon, right? This is what Pantheon wants to be. And I think it's nailing it. You know, just just the overall design of the of this area. Nothing has actually changed. If you, I'm sure if you would take a screenshot of this area before and after, the only thing that would change is the assets, but these assets make it look so much more cohesive. These trees look so good. Like props to the person who designed these tree models because this actually looks like trees. That looks like a you know whole area of trees. Even, even up close. I mean, yeah, you have the flat 2D texture of the leaves type of thing going on, just like every art style like this. But it's not distracting you know it looks it looks fine so yeah now i think this is part of throne fast um this is obviously still a work in progress particularly going back here like that is obviously a work in progress but you can already see how it's changing how it's getting better you know this gray boxing already looks way better than all the gray boxing ever did um you know, I know this This is all place. Let me look at the T-posing guys there. And even then, like these T-posing guys are a good way. And I think these were, this is intentional probably, but a good way to show you the scale of some of the areas of Pantheon. Pantheon's areas are going to be huge. I hope players understand that. <laughs> like they've shown off what they want to do. And they've, and I mean, like it's, it's going to be huge. Some of these areas are going to be massive because you can climb it. You can go anywhere. It's like Breath of the Wild. You can climb up stuff. You can go down, up and up and down vertically. There's a whole wide world that they're building. Uh, some could argue the scope creep is a bit much. Uh, and I could see their point on that. But if they can start getting the world itself, the assets placed, the models done, you know, all that kind of stuff, get that up and running. And then they already know what they're going to do with the systems. So they just got to implement the systems and get those up and running. That's two of your biggest hurdles done. Everything else is polish. So this is the big step. I do not think that this art style is going to appeal to everybody. But, and, and I don't think this video is doing the best job of selling it. Like I said, it looks hazy in a lot of spots. Um, and it looks like, the, like I would love to see uh, maybe a better time of day video. That'd be kind of good, you know to kind of highlight how the sun changing during the day to the night, the, you know, the day night cycle, how that's going to work in terms of like how it affects this art style. Um, but you can kind of get an idea, like here's a more shaded area. Um, but again, it just has this, like, like somebody has a filter over it to kind of make it a little easier. Just it's, it's, you know, especially compared to that, that does not have it right. That's very bright and clean, you know, even here still kind of bright and clean. Easy. I don't know if that's intentional or not. That's very bright. But again, this is not done. You can definitely tell because like that is very blurry texture. Texture work. I'm hoping that's not done at least. Um, you know, but this is uh, this is looking good. Again, the trees and all that. It's very unique. Um, you know, as a work in progress, it looks looks great. Especially like this. I love the vibe of this area. Dark, you know, swampy. But again, you can tell it's not quite done. It needs more work, more attention to detail, more polish. But all of that comes afterwards. This is pretty good. You can see the jagged lines. There's definitely a lot of aliasing going on here. Um, and it looks like maybe the paint style needs to be a bit sharper again here. 
Um, this tree right here looks with the 2D leaves. That's a bit much. I don't know. This looks too stick like, but the tree doesn't even look done. So, you know, give it that. So as a as overall as a demo video, I'm impressed. I like it. I, this is the design they're going to go with and stick with. I mean, they're already cranking out tons of assets. Please, by all means, this is fine. I, th I think it does a nice job of towing the line between that classic sort of realistic. I mean, let's be honest, EverQuest was never realistic looking. But, you know, that, that sort of realistic style, you know, a bit more grounded, we'll put it that way. Um, with the more Fortnite, World of Warcraft-y, you know, cartoonishly look. I hate to use that phrase, cartoonish, but, you know, that more simplified look, we'll put it that way. This will age well. If it's done right with enough polish, um, I mean, the concept art is very good. The concept art shows you why this is a good idea. You know, like that's the female. Let's see, do we got the male in armor here? No, she. They only did the male in armor in the in the in game. But like this concept art shows you right here why it's a good idea. You know, the the goblin they had back here. You know that that right there shows you why it's a good idea. It ages well enough. It has that like fantasy painting look to it. Not not unlike the older days of, of uh, fantasy, you know, 80s and 90s. Not the Boris Vallejo or whatever, <laughs> you know, those old fantasy novels. But like, you know, def definitely captures a bit more of that, that fantasy look. That, yeah, the in-game stuff definitely needs some work though. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like this. I think this is good. And I think that... Uh, I think they're on the right track. Now, I will be honest. Uh, I watched Nathan Napalm's uh, viewing of this video, and he just said something towards the end, and I, and I have to agree with him. Um, I don't know how far along they are with this stuff. They, this video is very short. This is a five-minute video. Um, I don't know, like, to be honest, how far along they are with this redo. They sound like they have a lot done. They sound like they've been just cranking this stuff out like it's a factory. But at the same time, this is all they're showing. And while they do have Joppa, the director, and uh, you know this other guy here um, talking over the you know is a Benjamin, yeah, director of comms, Ben Benjamin Dean. Uh you know. Chris Perkins and, and Benjamin Dean are two of the big guys. Uh, I know there's others, but, uh, you know, for for this game. And, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, and they know this too, that has hurt viewings of Pantheon is when people look at it and go, my God, this looks terrible. The, I watched Co Carnage have this problem a lot when he was trying to show off uh, Pantheon. It, it it has issues art styles you know a lot of people think art doesn't matter and it doesn't to a point it's it's like anything like the first impressions are what matter right so your game doesn't have to be the most gorgeous looking game in the world but it also can't be something that offends the eyes it has to have a style right and so pantheon didn't have a style it had a look and you know the look was unity store assets and while that was a more realistic look it wasn't one that sold well with anybody um, so this will sell. It needs a little more polish, but it will sell. And the one thing I did notice, and you can tell here, um, Dajun Pantheon's development. Look at the and are eager speed. To share more of our painted style as we continue to bring it. See, do you see that? Look at that running animation, but also look at look at how the world is moving around him. So we'll start right here, right? Watch this. Looking forward to this new stage in Pantheon's development, and are eager to share more of our painted style as we continue to bring it. Do you see how smooth that is? That is crazy smooth. That is that is way smoother than uh, the old performance was on the old stuff. So if, if all they did was change the art and improve the performance that much, that's already a huge win. <laughs> that's already a huge win. So I, I absolutely think that uh, this is the way to go. Uh, but yeah, like Nathan Napalm said, I think that, uh, you know, I, I like I said, I don't know how far they are, how much they really want to show off. Um, you know, but getting this in the hands of more content creators probably is the best path right now, uh, at least for previews. 
Um, I'd love to be like in an alpha weekend or something just to give it a shot. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I, I, I absolutely think that it's, it's going to be that time again where, you know, if this is the look they want to go with and they want to reach more audiences, they got to reach out to content creators and, you know, see what they think and, and how that would reach out, you know, what they think would do to reach audiences that they might create the favor of, or might want to try and create the favor of, um, yeah, right now, you're, <clears throat> right now you're not going to convert the faithful. Um, you know, if somebody's a big fan of World of Warcraft right now, they're not going to hop on over. Um, you know, but like I said, uh, sh showing off this, showing off the systems that are working with this, uh, showing off more than just, you know, a little bit of a starting area and stuff like that, uh, and getting more races in. Like, I can't tell you how badly I want to play Dark Mirror. Like, Dark Mirror, the whole backstory that they had for it was metal as hell. You know, and I really just think that they're cool. You know, they're basically dark elves. If if, if mermaids were dark elves, <laughs> you know, that came from another planet and ripped apart their god. You know, it, it's yeah, <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, and there's some other really cool ones. The scar, uh, you know, the the um, the archon, the archons. Like, there's so many cool things that uh, exist beyond the little thrown fast. Uh, you know, male humans, males stuff that they've been doing. Uh, on their on their lore stuff on their website, they have so many cool ideas. Uh, you don't even need to hear any of the streams or anything that they've done, just you know, or any of the videos. Just go and see what the the background, the lore of all this is. It's crazy. It's cool. Um, you know, putting that vision together and putting it in the game. Uh, I can tell you right now, it's going to easily stand up with anything from you know Norath of EverQuest to Final Fantasy to uh, you know World of Warcraft. It's it's straight out of those pages. You know, maybe not Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy can get, uh, you know, pretty, yeah, you know, that, that might be pushing it. <laughs> Hardcore fans of Final Fantasy probably would disagree with me. We'll put it that way. But my point is, is that, yeah, this is... More demographics. This is good. This is good. This is the direction they needed to go. So I look forward to seeing more. And uh, yeah, if you're a dev and you're watching, I'd love to give this a shot on Alpha. I was a long time player of EverQuest and World of Warcraft and everything. It's not like I'm new to MMOs at all. So, yeah. You you want uh, somebody's input? I'd be happy to offer it. But yeah, I think this is gonna conclude this for now. We've been pushing this video up pretty far. What almost forty minutes talking about this? <laughs> so, but yeah. So as Pantheon Rise of the Fallen's new art update. So uh, yeah, if you like what we saw here, uh, you know you can always like and subscribe. I won't mind. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, thank you. Take care. Bye bye.